In this video I'm making a pixel game in the most capable tool available, Figma. I wanted to see if it's possible to create a functional game using variables, advanced prototyping, boolean, if statement, components and other fancy animation to make this game as epic as possible in 10 hours. We are starting off with a black canvas. The first thing we need is some assets, so I searched the internet looking for pizza related assets. Unfortunately I found none, so let's get cooking. I'm gonna start with the pizza base and I'm gonna use 4 and 4 pixel grid because if I'm gonna suffer it has to be symmetrical. You see making games is really not that difficult, it only took me 3 hours to draw a pizza base and its toppings. Once I had everything I put it together into a mobile frame. This game starts with beautifully minimal screen which is a giant pizza plate and a button with start. Award winning UX yeah! if you ask me. All my assets are ready, the next step is to create a component out of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all my groups and I'm gonna close them all together with the component set. Next thing I'm gonna give them a name which is the toppings for each different variant. I'm gonna give the names like uh, meatballs, pepperoni, green peppers, onions and for the property I'm gonna just give it a name as a name. The same I'm gonna do with the selection. Let's test our pizza with toppings. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the instance of our toppings and I'm gonna layer them off top of each other by duplicating the instance and changing the variant. Once I have them all there I'm gonna duplicate our pizza base and I'm gonna layer all the toppings on top to see how they look like. I might wanna twist stuff because I don't want different toppings over each other in case the user decide to choose them all. To do that I'm gonna go back into master component and tweak the placing slightly bit to feel it more natural. And now our pepperoni looks great. Next yeah. I'm gonna close the pizza base together with the toppings into one frame. The next step is to add variables. This is when the magic happens and by magic I mean a bit of conditional statements. What we want is we want to play with the opacity variable. I'm gonna create a variable which is named opacity and I'm gonna give it a value of zero. Then inside our toppings we go to appearance and when it's right now appearance is equal 100% we're gonna open that and select our variable which is opacity. Now let's test it if it's working. Let's go to our frame and hit the prototype mode. On the prototype we wanna add interaction only. We're gonna set a variable opacity. We want to be equal 100%. On click let's try it. Okay, it's working, but we do not want all the toppings go at once. We have to create variables for each individual topping, like cheese opacity, pepperoni opacity, meatball opacity, and one. And for each of them, we're gonna go inside the appearance, and instead of 100%, we're gonna add our respective variable. For topping meatball, we're gonna add meatball opacity. To make it work like a real game engine, we want user to click the icon cheese and then the topping cheese to be shown on our pizza base. To do that we want to have icons with our equivalent to the toppings. When user click the cheese icon we want to set variable cheese opacity to 100%. Let's see if it's working. It's working perfectly. Now we have to repeat that process for each icon. The base of our game is here. How we can make it even more interactive and more feel like a game -ish? We can let the user decide which pizza base they want because we do care about user choices. I duplicated my pizza base and just changed the color to red, it's supposed to indicate just tomato sauce, no cheese. I've added a variable which is called base. We're gonna go inside the property name and we're gonna select the variable base. What's gonna happen is when user gonna select the base yellow, we want the base to change to yellow. There is one thing bear in mind while using that, we have to make sure each screen have exact the same component inside with the variable. We have to make sure on the next screen that is using the same pizza base instead of just component name we're gonna give it component variable name. We're gonna hit our base, go to the right side panel and click the base name. Click next, our setting is gonna preserve. I decided to add a bit of playfulness, I created like overlay with like EU. To do that I went for mouse enter, 200, open overlay and then setting on manual in the middle of the pizza. I had to tweak the placing. I drew arrows and then I stretch the frame inside the arrow. By doing this we're gonna create a movement. We're gonna connect two arrows next to each other and we want after delay to arrow go up and then after slide the layer to go down. On the screen it will look like go up, go up, go up, go up. Don't forget to 
connect the second arrow to the first arrow. Now we have to connect our screens together to give them sense. We have the user selecting base, it's going to the next screen, then user selecting their toppings. And I really don't know what to do at this point. I'm just gonna do a delay transition after like 8,000 milliseconds is just gonna transition to the next screen. I didn't want them to keep clicking next, next, next. I tried to create counter, however, it didn't work. In Figma, they don't have counter, or at least I don't know how to make counter. After delay, we'll have to do. The next screen, we're gonna connect them by sliding pizza upwards. It's gonna transition to the next screen. We're gonna hit the pizza and add on drag transition. This is how our transition between screens looking now. We have the arrow with the arrow animation going up. User gonna slide the pizza to the oven. Here I'm thinking we're gonna add fire. Let's draw it together. After another 6,000 rectangles, I have three different states of fire. I'm gonna connect them together with the animation on delay. Let's go hit the prototype mode and we're gonna connect them to each other. After delay, maybe 200 milliseconds and we're going to use the smart animate. As always, don't forget to connect all of them. The last one will have to go to the first one. And let's see how it's presenting right now. Our pizza is cooking. It's a bit laggy. I'm just gonna speed up this animation by reducing the delay time and animation time. And the last but not least, we want user gratification. I've decided to throw balloons. Again, I had to draw them myself. I group my first set of pixels and I group my second set of pixels and close them together into the component set. The process look very similar to the arrow. I've stretched the frame, which is the, the illustration inside. The last one is empty because I want the balloon to pop. But this one is a bit tricky because I want balloon to slide down. But at the same time, I want if the user click balloon, it pops, it disappears. So this is not perfect, but is working. Uh, we have the first state of the balloon when balloon is at the top, then balloon is at the bottom, then balloon is splashing and then it's gone. We have the after delay, same as we did on the arrows. But as well, we have on click, it's changing to the popped state, which is the uh, third variant. <laughs> a bit complicated, but trust me, it's not that complicated. <laughs> By doing that, we're only working with the one screen instead of drawing different, different frames with the placing on balloons. The last but not least, we want to indicate that the topping been already selected. We can do that by throwing if conditional statement. If the cheese is selected, the icon is faded. We're gonna slightly repeat the process what we did at the beginning with the toppings. Basically, we're gonna create a variable name for each of those icons. I've decided this time to just go with T1, T2, T3 to not confuse myself how many meatball opacity I have. We have now if the cheese opacity is equal 100, if user clicked the icon cheese, then set the cheese icon to 10%. It's look like faded away. It, in ideal world, it shouldn't be clickable. If user didn't click the cheese, then we still see the icon cheese. It is a bit like coding, but less line and more cheese. Now, if we click, our icon is fading away. As always, I'm leaving a Figma file in the description if you would like to recreate this yourself. Okay, real talk, the game is dumb, but it actually taught me more about variables than any other video you'd ever did. I used the boolean components for the toppings, component states to change UI without drawing 500 different frames, conditional logic with overlays and hover states, prototype transition for screens, like a fake game engine. But you could use the exact same login for builder like pricing components or toggle between teams. There is loads of different places with the actual use of those variables. But pizza is more fun. If this helps you rethink your UX, then hit the like or just go build something ridiculous. The world needs more pixel games on Figma. And remember, every pixel is a topping, so choose wisely. See you next time.